Hello, this is Amanda Fernandez. Um, this is part two for the exam three question. Um, so we're going to be answering the second question, which on the study guide would be question six. Um, and the question is asking, what is the fair model of vocabulary instruction? So, I took the time and liberty to draw out what the Freire model looks like. So, this is what the Freire model is. In the middle, you would have your term, or your vocabulary word per se, that the students are going to write down. And there's four things the students need to do. Um, de a definition, characteristics, examples of the word, and then non-examples or opposites or antonyms of the, um, of the word. So it's very simple, really. Um, usually you can like just print this out as a worksheet um, and give it to students. Um, this could actually be part of like the daily five that they do if you're doing like a reading workshop day. Um, and so you can have them like be focusing on this or as part of their daily five, hey, you need to find a word that you are unsure of or you don't know or vocabulary term and write it down. Um, on this chart, um, or um, ah, I keep forgetting what the term is. Graphic organizer. There we go. On this graphic organizer, um, and then obviously turn it in um, as part of your daily five for the day. Um, so that's kind of what um, the Freire model is. It's just to kind of help students process um, vocabulary terms or words they don't understand or don't know. Um, and it's, it's actually really, um, it's really interesting. I've seen this done a few times. Um, I've seen my brother use it, um, for his school. Um, I've seen my host teacher use them before. They don't call it Freire model, obviously. Um, I think, I think my brother's school, they call it, um, the vocab chart. Um, and I think that was the same thing with, um, with my host teacher as well. So that's kind of what it looks like. Now let me show you what the students should be doing. So the first thing students need to do is they need to find a term in the books that they're reading or in a book that they're reading that they kind of don't understand or they're struggling with or you know what, they maybe they know and now it's just time to see what they already know. Um. I'm trying to find a term that's not going to be super difficult that I can actually do and show you. Um, I should have brought my dictionary, huh? Sorry, I hear my cat. I think the term I'm going to use... Oops, sorry. Is... Let's say, let's say we're doing the term nest. Okay, so that's our term. A student writes down nest. They don't. They they probably already know what a nest is, and now it's time to see what they already know. So, the term nest. So now they got to come up with a definition. Um, now teachers can do this one of two ways. Now the students can either come up with a definition on their own, or they have to do, or they have to go into the dictionary and look up the word um, either via online or in a dictionary or on their phone so depending on what you're allowing them to use um, but they need to find a definition or make up a definition of the word nest I'm gonna make up I, I prefer making it up because I feel like students will understand better um, in their own words the meaning of the word so definition for me is so the definition of nest is a bur a place in a tree that birds make to create oh to uh, not to create to lay their eggs. 
And this is just a definition I just came up with. Um, so you can have the, the students either make up their own definition or again, have them um, look it up in a dictionary or, um, or look it up online. Um, I would personally have them use like dictionary.com. That's usually a pretty good place to, uh, to look for, for words or their meanings. Um, but that would be a definition. Uh, characteristics. Now, characteristics could be one of two things. Um, obviously, it's either describing the word. So, like, so like say, like, the characteristic of a cat is, is maybe it has fur, soft, purrs. Um, you're, you're basically just listing different adjectives about the term that you're using. Um, it might be harder for some other terms to come up with char characteristics, um, especially words like maybe maybe that they don't know. Like um, one of the words that my students were were doing was philosopher, and the definition that was given to them was um, was a great thinker, but there's not really much characteristics about it. Um, so you have to be careful on what you want your students to be focusing on. So the freer model, there's some words that it's like, you know what, at least in my opinion, there's some things that you're like, you know what, they can't really come up with a characteristic for it, or it might be a struggle. So I would definitely have them fill out three of the four boxes out by themselves. Um... But obviously, um, I'm, today I'm going to show you what all four boxes should hopefully look like. So characteristics for a nest, if a student was using nest as their vocabulary word, could be um, sticks, um, uh, treetop, um, Let's see, what else? Sticks, treetop, leaves maybe. Um, bun bundles of sticks. So essentially you're just describing um, different, different characteristics, different adjectives about the word. So bundles of sticks, uh, maybe mud, or um, or no, not mud, um, shelter, or birds maybe. So those are just kind of some characteristics that I feel describe nest real well. Um, obviously that might be different for every student, but that. But if I was a student and I was doing the, the Freyer model version of for, for the term nest, that's kind of how I would describe the term nest. So examples of nests. So there's owl nests. So owls live in nests. Um, eagles. Eagles live in nests. So eagle nests. So that's kind of just some examples of nests. Um, I guess that you can kind of use, like, where, where, where do you really see nests? So usually with birds, especially um, birds that fly. Um, so non-examples. So, so non-examples of, um, of nests. Actually, every bird uses a nest, now that I, mention, now that I think about it. But um, non-examples of are actually, this is probably going to be the easy part because it's basically, what is the opposite, or what is not a nest? So, a house, a house is not a nest, although that might actually be up for debate if you want to really go there, but let's just say for now a house is not considered a nest for birds. Um, let's see, dog house. Car. Cars are not nests. 
Um, school. School is not a mess. So that is kind of what the Freyer model is or what it should look like. Um, I might have done the characteristics wrong, though. But I ho hopefully I didn't. I tried to keep it to... I, I tried to choose a word that I could use all four. Um, but yeah, this is kind of what it should look like for your students. So there's a term. They have a definition. I would suggest them trying a definition out for themselves before they look up a definition or something like that. Um, characteristics that they've come up with that they feel describes the word pretty well. Examples of nests. So there's owl nests, eagle nests. If I wanted to, I could say penguin nests. Um, although penguin nests might, again, be different. But still, um, those are just examples of nests. And then not examples, which is anything that is not a nest, which I feel like is a house or a dog house, a car, a school. So those are kind of, so those would be non examples. So that's kind of what the Freyer model is. It's to help guide students on how to understand a term they might not know. Um, and you can actually probably use this for any grade all the way through 12th grade. Um, you could probably even start in kindergarten, but this would be more like a classroom type um, activity instead of them doing it on their own. Um, but yeah, this is kind of what the Freyer model would look like. You might not call it a Freyer model when you're in your own classroom, but um, that's, that's kind of it for, for this video. Um, hopefully this was helpful on what the Freyer model is, and I hope I explained it real well. Um, again, I tried to, uh, to do it myself and so you guys could see what it might look like. Other than that, um, I hope this video was informative and, um, yeah, and I will see you in the next video to hopefully answer, uh, the next questions, which is discussing the three tiers of vocabulary words. Um, other than that. You guys have a great rest of your day, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.